What's up guys, it's 2021. I'm coming to you with a little different type of video. I'm gonna to talk to you about my mental health plan for 2021. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. You may find benefit in this or not. And it comes from the changes I started to make out of a necessity for a more grounded self. The components of this plan for me are multi-pronged. They're physical, they're mental, they're emotional, and they're spiritual. And they are conscious choices that I do every day that help me be in the right frame of mind to be my best. And it stems from the effects of 2020 and the crushing impact it had on my psyche and my mental health. And both me and my wife experienced levels of depression through 2021. And I know if you're watching this, more than likely you have too. I'm gonna give you some context. So it's not just, hey, um, life's easy and this is just what I do. There's a reason I'm putting this together for you. There's a reason I'm doing the things I'm doing. And you're gonna find that in this video. So first things first, 2020 was a tough year. It was a tough year for most people. All kinds of challenges, different things have happened. To kind of set you up as to why my plan is the way it is, I'm gonna give you the context of what happened in my life in 2020. Start of my year was a move. Uh, I was moving uh, into a house that I was having built. It took four months longer than it should have. Thought it was really stressful at the time. Public service announcement for you is never go with the cheapest moving company. Side note, uh, should have taken six hours, took 14 hours, ruined a bunch of stuff. Thought that was stress, wasn't really stress in the bigger picture. Wife had a major surgery early in the year and there was recovery there. Again, not nothing out of the ordinary. The pandemic hits. Obviously that's affected us all and changes because of it. Me being in sales and selling to my local market, I started to see the effects of the pandemic and the stress it was putting on my job. Now, also my job was a job that I was not really happy in to begin with. Now the added strain of a pandemic in the part of the world I'm in, we're reliant on oil and gas, especially my market. There was an oil and gas crisis, again, heavily impacted my business. In July of 2020, my wife and I came down with COVID. There's a lot of stories about, that's not that big of a deal. It's, you gotta test to know if you have it, not us. I had COVID flu symptoms for 12 days. And I had all of the standard ones, the loss of smell, loss of taste, low grade fever, headaches, body aches, night sweats, chills, hair loss. I had a bunch of very unpleasant days. Now, if you've had the flu, two days is a long time to have the flu. A week is a long time to have the flu. My symptoms lasted 12 days and then I was negative. My wife had those same symptoms last for roughly 16 days, but she was having heavier migraine. Well, those migraines didn't go away after 17 days. After 100 days, 100 straight days of migraines, she finally got in front of a neurologist. And to this day, she's continuing to deal with side effects from COVID. So needless to say, COVID, the illness had a big impact on me, my family, and my life. Can't really understate that. I go back to work to get laid off shortly thereafter. Wasn't a big surprise. In October of this year was probably the biggest challenge of 2020. There was an accident in my home involving my three-year-old son. It was my fault. And I haven't really been able to talk much about this just simply from dealing with the trauma of the experience and how it has affected me. But I feel it's important to share with you because it really put things into perspective and why I am changed because of it. My little three-year-old son is a rough and tumble, hearty, big three-year-old boy, and he likes to rough house. And we were rough housing in our living room and we were going hard and he just keeps going harder. And at one point, 
like I've done hundreds of times, I grabbed him up from under the under his arms and tossed him up into the air. Well, because we were grabbing and pulling and, and playing rough, he grabbed a hold of my sleeve when I let him go. And before I knew it, he was flying head first into the hardwood floor. It knocked him unconscious. My wife being a nurse went into nurse mode. We should have probably called an ambulance. Instead, we rushed to the hospital. Um, he was in and out of consciousness. He wasn't moving. Um, in this two hour window, which this is about as much detail as I'm gonna give for that experience. It was the scariest two hours of my entire life. I didn't know if he would walk again. I didn't know if he would talk again. The test showed that he had a cracked skull and had a brain bleed. He was showing positive signs. We transferred to another hospital uh, where we were monitored for 24 hours. Within two or three days, the doctor said he will make 100% recovery and there is a 0% chance of any permanent brain damage whatsoever. That, again, was the scariest thing I've ever been through and my wife and I are forever changed for it. It can happen to anybody. I'm an athlete, uh, I play with my children all the time, and it was a split moment. I felt like it was an out-of-body experience. I don't even know how it happened. And I realized I was so fundamentally rocked in that experience, like I couldn't wake up from this dream. And I knew as a man, a as a human being, I, I'm not grounded and centered like I want to be, like I need to be, like I needed to be in that moment. And so fortunately, his recovery started almost immediately. Within, within 48 hours, he was back at home being mostly himself, you know, had some balance issues, but really very little effects from the injury. But me and my wife were clearly affected by the trauma. I say I had PTSD, but it, it's actually technically qualified as acute ATSD. It, it didn't really matter what I was doing. Out of nowhere, I would be bombarded with these, these thoughts or these visuals or these feelings of replaying the experience. Because I literally, I would go into convulsions like you know, it was almost like a bomb went off in my head. And it took me months to have some level of normalcy in my day from that experience. You've dealt with your own challenges in 2021. And I shared my story to give you some context. This plan, my thoughts and my techniques didn't come because it's easy. It was forged through the fire of my challenges. And hopefully you benefit from hearing them. So my day starts anywhere from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. And I'm up before my family because I want to hit the gym and this is the this is my time. I get in my car and I'm I'm listening to something that feeds my soul. Whether it's music that makes me feel good or of listening to audios that are uplifting, that are feeding my soul, that make me feel better. I work out, I feel good while I'm working out. Another big element of my plan has been my diet. I have been tracking my macros. And if you don't know what a macro is, it's basically a macronutrient, and that is either a protein, a carbohydrate, or fat. And I've been following the flexible macro diet. Uh, won't get too into it at this point, but essentially it's tracking those three macros and a certain amount that I'm allowed every day. Um, I've been very st strict about this. I, I give myself some cheat days and I give myself some leeway, but for the most part, I've been following this pretty close to a T. And I do that with an app. The app is my fitness pal. It's free, there's a paid version, but essentially I just keep track and log everything that I eat in a day. And it has a huge database where you just plug in things you eat, whether it's at a restaurant or you're bought at a store or even maybe scan the barcode and you can just track what you're eating. If you've never done anything like this before or you're trying to eat healthy 
it's a great practice just to log what you're eating. A lot of people think they're eating healthy and then they learn after actually seeing the nutrients in, in what they're eating, they find it's not as healthy as they thought it was. So not only am I tracking, but I'm also following a diet plan. This is keeping me looking good, feeling good, and a big part of my physical plan for 2021. Probably the most important thing I will do all day is I find 15 minutes to meditate. Now, that word used to not mean much to me, but right now, let's see, since October, so for three months, every day, and I haven't missed a day, I've spent 15 minutes in meditation. And I say it used to not make mean anything to me because I didn't, I kind of waffled through it and I, I, I wasn't getting anything from it. Right now I couldn't imagine my life without it. And my life is great right now. I've got perspective on my side, I've got healthy habits on my side, and I'm now starting to see the manifestations of this, these positive changes that I've put into my life. So I spend 15 minutes on my back patio and I meditate in silence. My wife knows what I'm doing, so you know, her or the kids, leave me alone. Um, there's been times where I've had to substitute where I do it. Sometimes I'm putting in headphones and I'm laying in bed, but it helps ground me. It, it has given me that sense of stability in my heart, in my soul, in my body, in my being that I didn't have in those moments when I needed them most back in October with my son. I don't want to have knee-jerk responses to what life throws at me. I wanna be more in control of my mind and my emotions so that I'm, one, better prepared to deal with the adversities of life and also more capable of making the most of these situations. You know, life isn't about what happens to us. It's about how we react and respond to what happens to us. And the other thing that I've been reminding myself of lately is the joy is in the unfolding and the not knowing what's going to play out. I know I get frustrated and people get frustrated because things aren't working out the way they wanted to or they didn't see themselves in this position. But I like to think that part of why we're here is for that not knowing and that unfolding to happen. And that's really where the good stuff is. So what is meditation to me? Meditation to me is quieting my mind. Now, for the longest time, that was damn near impossible. But my idea of that has changed. My expectations of that have changed. And quieting my mind, so here's what I do. I find something to focus my conscious mind on. Some sort of noise, whether it's the humming of the electrical box outside or the humming of the distant traffic. That's where I'm choosing to place my conscious thoughts. And so I'm just, I set my alarm for 15 minutes. So it's like, hey, for these 15 minutes, I don't have anything to do. I don't have any problems to solve. I don't have anything to worry about. This is just my time to enjoy the peace and quiet. So I use that sound as an anchor to when I become aware that my mind is going in other places, I go back to that anchor, that consistent noise, and just appreciate the time. And I just allow myself to feel good. Now, ultimately what I'm doing is I'm keeping out all the other influences that affect my thoughts and my feelings and my being. And I'm gaining control of that my influences and that my influence is going to be decided by me and I'm gonna do that by quieting my mind. And ultimately what I'm doing, molding my thoughts and feeling around feeling good. In fact, one fun thing that I've, I've done in this moment is I go, what would it feel like to have everything I wanted? Now, not just material what I want or financially what I want, but all the love, all the affection, all the security, all the comfort. What if I had all of that? What would that feel like? And I get that feeling cultivated inside of me and I just, I sit in it 
and I just feel it. And it's almost like I bask in it. And I just, I don't think about how I'm gonna get there. I don't think if it's possible to get there because I'm just doing it in my own mind, in my own space. And I'll tell you what, it's almost like it brings up my energy, it brings up my being. And ultimately, that experience, when it's not about material things or a particular person or a particular act that is needed for me to feel good, and I realize it's just a, a state of being, the conclusion I've come to is that's like in the presence of my inner being. That's what my inner being feels like. That's what my you know, source, God, you fill in the blank of what you want to call that. But that's what that feels like. It feels like love and it's peaceful and it's nourishing and it's filling up my heart and my soul. Now imagine if you started every day with that feeling. That's what I've been doing. And it's been life altering. Like I said, meditation used to be this esoteric theory that people talk about and now it's just it's real to me. It's something I've been living and I haven't missed a day in three months. And I don't intend to miss days. Now, I didn't start at 15 minutes. I started at 10 minutes. And you may want to start at five minutes. But then I started to get, you know, there was a little bit of like pushing through the discomfort. And then it was, oh, okay, now I appreciate it. And then I expanded on that time. And so now I set an alarm for 15 minutes on my phone because it's more like, okay, I'm protective of this time, but sometimes I'll then turn off the alarm and I'll just, I'll continue it for another five or 10 minutes. I've put a premium on feeling good. Back in October, it became very clear, certain things just don't matter that much. What really matters is what's important in life. And so I've taken that experience, I've learned from it, and I've condensed down what's important to me. And I prioritize feeling good. And like I've talked about in this video, it's a matter of being conscious of my thoughts. And an old native proverb talks about the wolf you feed. There is a battle of two wolves inside each of us. One wolf is evil, representing anger, jealousy, greed, resentment, lies, inferiority, and ego. The other wolf is good, representing joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The wolf that wins is the one you feed. I find that this is so true for me that there are things that pop up in my mind that if I chose to feed them, it would grow. And I'm just not interested in doing that anymore. I want to foster the good things in my world and in my life, and I find this proverb to resonate and hit home. Essentially, it comes down to choices and the choices that we can control. There's a lot in this life we can't control, and the feeling of that lack of control can be overwhelming and cause anxiety. So it's an effort to maximize the things that I can control. Basically, without this centered space, I realize I'm more susceptible to the conditions of life. Whatever is thrown at me is going to affect me and my mood and the person I am. I don't want to give somebody or something the power over me. There's the saying, what lives in your head rent-free? Well, I want to determine what's living in my head rent-free. And this is my strategy to be more on top of that or to have some sense of control what's living rent-free in my head. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. This has been a different video than some of the others I've made. And honestly, it's been one of the toughest videos for me to both film and edit. If you stuck around this long, I'm sure you're going to take something from it. If you go ahead and hit that like button, I'd certainly appreciate it. And also comment on what would you like to see more of? Was there something that I mentioned, whether it's diet, whatever it is, that you'd like either me to get my personal response because I respond to the comments or make a more elaborate video? I'm happy to do it. So appreciate you sticking around. Thanks for checking out this video and we'll catch you next time.